Amazing Spider-Man number 791 by Dan Slott and Stuart Eminen. Spidey and Mockingbird spend a late night doing some crime fighting. The next morning, Pete's up bright and early, and as Spider-Man, he swings out the apartment with work clothes in hand, or web. At the office, various members of his new department assume that he's late, but he pops in, unchecked by security, and ahead of schedule. Joe Robertson welcomes his new science editor to the team, telling him his first assignment is due Saturday, and hands him an Alchemex phone. Suddenly, his new intern snaps a pic of the man behind webware holding an A-phone. Just a little embarrassing. Meanwhile, across town, Bobby Morse has a new gig of her own. She walks the floor of Humanitech with founder Xander Zinn. Her phone rings and boyfriend Pete has been so caught up in himself, he forgot she'd gotten a job there. Missing him, she invites him and his entire team to tour the facility. Once there, they walk the floor, and Pete notices the brainwaves of the robots look remarkably human. One of them fights back, taking all of his spider power to subdue it. Something's fishy. Later that night, the two sneak back in. They work on some recon while Aunt May calls, inviting them to dinner, but first, distracting Spider-Man. He hangs up to see her surrounded. Bad news is, they're not alone. Xander demands they leave while the robots beg to be opened up. Inside each robot, a matrix bulb screams and jumps to the floor. The sand collects and forms Quicksand, one of Thor's old enemies. She seeks revenge and Spidey asks her to spare Zen, which she grants. The next day, the story on Humanitech breaks while Xander Zen goes on the run. Later, Harry and Liz scout their old building for an Alchemex asset. Later on, they make it home to dismiss the sitter and notice some new scrapes. She chalks it up to simply roughhousing while she conceals some blood vials behind her back. What's this Emma chick up to? The issue wraps with Pete back at the bugle while Joe gives him a pat on the back. He tells his new boss that it was a team effort, also being reminded that his next assignment is due right on its heels. But nothing gets Peter Parker down these days. Being under pressure at the Daily Bugle feels like being home. And with that, this story arc is concluded. You know, if you poke around the Twitterverse, you'll see that Dan Slott gets a lot of heat. While a lot of his personal opinions love to skirt the political realm, it's really a no-brainer that he's going to alienate some folks. Luckily for him, he still manages to write some pretty good comic book stories. This was a solid story, and while you could pick it apart, I think it still deserves the higher accolades being doled out in the Marvel Universe. Plus, Stewart's artwork is still as sharp as ever. I give this one a 10 out of 10. If you like this video, there's hundreds more like it, spanning several current and classic story arcs. Click the boxes here for more playlists. This video is also accompanied by my blog at nerdiestkidyouknow.com. You can also follow links to my Facebook or Twitter pages, as well as a link to this very issue for sale on my eBay page by clicking below. For the Nerdiest Kid You Know, I'm Sam Torito. Thanks for watching.